Hello and welcome to Production Bytes. I'm your host Nick and today I'm going to be sharing 11 tips to improve your workflow in FL Studio 11. Some of these are old tips and some of them are new features, but all of them will help improve your workflow if you know them. Ever had a sample play at the wrong speed or pitch when you bring it into a project, but it plays fine in the browser? Go into the sample, right click on the time knob and select none. This happens when a sample has embedded tempo information and FL tries to match it to your project tempo. Often this is desirable, especially if you're working with loops, but sometimes the tempo information is wrong or you just didn't want it to be stretched. You can, however, tell FL to stop reading embedded tempo information under Options, General Settings. Ever had an issue where you can't cut a sample precisely? No matter how you try, it just won't cut exactly where you want it to. In the playlist, under the Audio tab, switch off zero crossing, and now you can cut any audio clip wherever you like. But what's zero crossing? That's the next tip. Ever wonder how you can stop clicks and pops from forming when you cut audio clips? This happens because you've cut the waveform during its peak or trough, and the audio value has therefore jumped from a high value to zero suddenly, which creates a click. You have two options to prevent this. Firstly, cut all your samples using zero crossing, which quantizes all of your cuts to points where the waveform is crossing zero, and therefore won't create a click. Or you can just use one of the de-clicking modes. The de-clicking modes are useful for everything from preventing clicks and pops, to crossfading between audio clips, and they're worth experimenting with, but generally setting your de-click to generic will smooth out any clicks and pops. You can also grab the audio clip's handle while holding Alt, and move the fade out more finely, as the fades do spill beyond the end of the audio clip. Keep ending up with too many windows open and having a nightmare trying to close them all? Just hit F12 and then hit F5 and F9 to reopen the mixer and playlist. Hate constantly having to change the grid snap in the piano roll or the playlist? Firstly, I usually leave both of these set to main. Main slaves the grid after your master grid in the toolbar. To solve the original problem though, set the grid to line. Now the grid will be set to whatever the smallest shown measure is. Just zoom in and out to change your snap grid. You can also see that you can choose between line and cell, and at first glance when you try them out they seem to do the same thing, so what's the difference? Line snaps to the nearest cell start, so the dividing point between the start of one cell and another is halfway through each cell, and cell snaps to the start of whichever cell you click into. So wherever you click inside a cell, it will always snap to the start of that cell. Which one you choose is entirely personal preference. Ever been frustrated that when cloning MIDI notes over long distances, you can accidentally bump them onto a different note or octave? Well in version 11, ImageLine have added a feature to help you with this. Now if you hold down shift while cloning a note, it will be locked to the horizontal axis, so you can't accidentally bump it onto a different note. Very useful when dragging across long sections. If you release shift and hold control instead, you can now only drag vertically, however. Have some favourite folders and hate having to go to them manually every time? Use the browser's snap function. Simply select which snap preset you want to use, browse to the folder you want, and then under the snap preset, tick frozen. Now pressing the number key across the top of your keyboard associated with that snap will take you straight to that folder location. You don't have to tick frozen, but if you don't, then any changes you make inside that snap will be saved the next time you come back to it. Speaking of the browser, ever been trying to trial samples and found it a pain constantly dragging and dropping and then testing the sample? Select the channel you want to test it on, then go to the browser and use shift and the up and down keys to automatically load the sample sequentially into the channel. This works with anything that you can drop samples into, such as the Fruity Sampler, SliceX, and Harmor. Got a sample which is causing problems while programming because it's in a different octave to everything else? Open the channel settings, and in the piano at the bottom, right-click on the bar at the top of the piano. Wherever you click will remap the point where the relative middle C is. So in this case, I can move the relative middle C up two octaves, which will allow me to move my MIDI notes up two octaves. Speaking of this, you can also left click and drag a usable range, which means that any keys hit outside of the selected range won't make any sound at all. This is all really useful when using layer channels, as you can give every layered channel its own note which will be the only note that will play it. And once you've combined all of these into a layer, it's a lot easier to program with. Hopefully you've at least noticed the plugin picker. Pressing Ctrl F8 or mouse button 5 will bring this up, and it allows you to select instruments and effects in a more eye-friendly way than lists. However, did you know that by pressing Shift F8, you can now get to the plugin's database list? 
From here, if you open it in Explorer, you can delete anything from the list, and also by going through the wrapper in FL Studio, you can add anything you want to the list. When you add something to the list through the wrapper, it will ask you what folder to put it in, and it will also save the current preset which is loaded. So this is quite useful if you have a default setup you want to load up, as whatever you've got set up when you add it to the list will be loaded every time you load it through the plugin picker. If you delete everything you don't want to use and then add the things you do want to use, then it makes for a much cleaner and personalised collection of plugins. If, however, you end up with loads of plugins still, ImageLine added a search function in FL11. Just start typing what you're looking for. That's all for this episode of Production Bytes though. For those who haven't seen my latest Q&A show, we're currently running a production competition to win five copies of our new sample pack, which will be released in August. One overall winner will also have their entry used in our promo video for the sample pack, so there's a promotion opportunity there too. For more information and to enter, there's a link at the top of screen now and also down in the description. But otherwise, thanks a lot for watching, please subscribe, and if you have any comments, suggestions or tips of your own, then pop them down in the comments below, or head over to our Facebook page and join the conversation there. Thanks for watching.